Talk about beer. Uh, this is my beer. It's my first beer of the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to have it. Mm -hmm. Do you ever talk to your good. beers? Frequently I talk to my beers. I'm not going to talk to this one because there's other people present and Bye. my plant might get jealous. Hi everybody, welcome back to Smoky Hill Bones. I, uh, today you might be wondering why we're in the kitchen and talking about plants. Well, it was kind of a rainy day today. It happens to be my birthday today. Happy birthday. My sister-in-law's in town. So we went out driving around uh, some of the big box stores and little garden centers looking for um, plants. Mostly trying to get out of the house and, and see if anybody was putting any spring stuff out yet or not. Um, they're not. They're not. Uh, so my wife had to run to the recycling center and we thought, hey, we don't have an outdoor space to work. We don't have a... a Potting bench anywhere since she's not here. Let's just uh, use the kitchen. Do it right here. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. It's a good, good. plan. So uh, when we were out today, we found these um, silly little trees, these ficus trees that um, just annoy the hell out of me every time I go to the garden center and find these. Um, I, I think they're just kind of trees that were rooted or or. I doubt they went through the process of air layering them, but they just cram them in these pots, cram some soil in there, and then they glue these rocks on here. I don't know if anybody ever has any real success with these things. Um, normally, I don't buy them, but... I feel like they're the kind of thing that you get as a gift and then, you know, it dies two weeks later. Yeah. So, um, for fun, we thought, hey, you know what, let's just go ahead and buy it and strip it down see what's in there we have no idea no idea what's down in here but let's just see for fun maybe we can save it maybe we can save it that'll be fun and then we also found Aaron found this uh, little pot it's got all these little ficus in it a whole bunch of just crammed that one was just kind of laying on top so it was on clearance it's variegated variegated yeah so we thought we'd just pull it out see what happens yeah what do you think should we pull out Pull out the pot and see what we can do. We better get this cleaned up we before Amber gets here too. Should we just yank them all out and put dirt everywhere? Let's throw some paper down. That's a good idea. Oh! Already started. Already, Already started. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's uh, let's take those apart. See what's what's in there. I'll pull this out. I'm really curious to see how this is looking looks real dry yeah real dry so um, obviously it hasn't been been watered at all in a while I think there was two more of these and one of them was just no way knows how long it's been dead sitting yeah. in there oh god one of them was just gray top to bottom so I'm gonna we, we stopped at another place too and I'm gonna throw a clip in here sometime of um, a juniper bonsai so here we are at a box store. Look at this. Down there, Clarence Isle plants. You can buy this dead juniper for eight dollars, nine dollars. You can't. Ouch! You can't get any more dead than that. touch it it just shattered it was funny so um, it looks like this is gonna pull apart real easy it looks like there are some roots in there why don't you work on that one we just teasing these out yeah uh, you could reach up there and grab that root rake Cute. and uh, you know what just take that and cool I always keep a spare set of chopsticks right here all right I love this yeah. I want one. This would be handy for any kind of house plant, not just your bonsai. Right. So we'll take uh, take these tools. She's got the root rake there. I got the chopstick, and we're just gonna gently tease these roots out. And this looks like this was all potting soil. So a lot this of times. It's just peat, isn't it? That's just yeah, peat. Or, or cocoa coir, or just something real, real fine, but kind of fluffy and no perlite, nothing to 
give it any sort of aeration, really, unless the so a lot of times what we like to do when we're teasing the roots out is start at the kind of the soil surface and we'll work our way down and start looking for the roots. But with, with these, we're just, we're, take, we're gonna try and take all the soil off of it. It looks like there's a pretty good, pretty good bunch of roots on each side of them, it looks like. It's a really interesting. Okay, what I'd like to do probably is get the camera closer. Yeah, I, I you should, up. look at these guys. Going up and over, look at this. This could be your earlier work. Okay, point. so. How high up on that trunk is that? Is that gonna end up below the soil or? I feel like the soil was just right about here. Well, I, maybe it was way up here, but it doesn't have to be. Right. It might get rotty if it's if it's that high up. I mean, the major roots don't start to like right here, down at this line. I mean, this guy was going up and over, and the real roots were growing out at the other end. So, let's see. Could be an interesting feature. Yeah. Let's see what. Looks like that's got a bunch of roots also. This guy coming out here. Is that a? It looks like a root that probably dried up at one time and just kept going. Probably all what that. Is, oh, that's just a, a rock, probably with glue on it. So let's, uh, now that we've got all the soil off of it, why don't we um, see if we can't evaluate all those roots and see if there's things that we need to cut off of it and uh, maybe help to encourage the uh, roots to start growing again and uh, see if we can't rescue this plant. So, Aaron, let me ask you something real fast. Yeah. When you get ready to start a project, what's one of the first things you do? What kind of project? Well, any project. Clear space. And and what else? You get know? all my stuff together that I know I need, so if I have to sit down on the floor, I do not have to get up again. Mm. That's good. So, the part about getting all the stuff rounded up? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't do that. And... <laughs> I think some of my bonsai tools are still packed up somewhere. Wow. I thought I had them out, but I don't. Oh. So anyways, what we're using today will be just our regular basic shrub pruners that we use. Okay, everybody's um, got a pair of those, right? Right. And then, um, of course, I think that's I think that's all we're really gonna need. I got some, I got these uh, cheap pair of shears here also that uh, we can do if we need. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, so why don't you take these, and, yeah. and I think what we're looking at is we've got this whole tangled mess of, of roots here. Um, if we look around and explore it really well, this one that comes wraps all the way around, it's got a nice big grouping of fine roots on the end, but I think we can get rid of that. And if we can see all of these roots down here, they're all coming off of this base or this root system here. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to, um, I think that's gonna give us plenty of area to, to maintain some small roots. And what else do we have here? If, if that comes off, we have roots there, then we've got this one to watch. And see, these roots don't, they wrap all the way around. So what I think we should do, mm. take this one off, okay. try to snip this one back a little bit, mm. and then regenerate the roots, and then we'll go for more root pruning the next time we prune it. Okay. So we're going to hopefully get more roots out of this. And we'll, we'll continue over the course of, of repotting to... Re reduce these bigger ones. So if you want to go ahead and take that one off. About where do I want to cut this? About up here? I I think cut or it. Way up I here by the base. I'd cut it right there. Okay, let's see what I can do. And in the meantime, I'm going to look. Made a nice clean cut. Yeah. 
So what, what I'm looking at on mine is, mm -hmm. I've got this root here that's kind of growing straight back up. That's out of interesting. The pot. I wondered if when they were pushed, when they were in the pot together, yeah. if that didn't huh. force up like that. Interesting. I wonder. So let's, let's just, we don't need that at all, so let's snip that off. Okay. And same thing, I think we can do, I'm, you can take a lot off of a, a root system, off of a ficus. So I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be too shy about a couple more of these here. So what I'll plan on is leaving these fine roots out here to help regenerate, hopefully get some more back rooting up the stem. So in future repots, we can continue to shorten this. Real Come shallow. out of here, oh yeah. So, so our, our root flare will be here. Our nabari will grow out there. And then we'll go ahead and plant that about that deep when we get to, get to planting. About to there, there to there. Yeah. Um, the soil level on this repot will be at where this chopstick is. Oh, okay. So okay. all this will be exposed. Ah, yes. Yeah. And then this guy? So, um, same thing, we're gonna keep encouraging the roots back up the stem and eventually, hopefully one day. Well, you never know, we may I like up... this, I, I like having these two sides and having a soil level below that, so mm -hmm. it's like a... That's yeah, that, that might be kind of inter interesting. I think that would be cool. Yeah, you know what? Knowing nothing about bonsai, that's what I think would be cool. Well, maybe you don't watch enough Smoke <laughs> Hill Bones Out videos. Um, so let's let's just do that for now. We I, I think the most important thing that we did was we 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 found the tree, we brought it home, we're gonna clean all this dried soil off off of everything. We'll get it back into a pot, get it watered, let it recover for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then we'll come in and do some more work. So um, let's go ahead and throw them in a pot right away. My mother in law bought me these nice little plastic pots at Christmas time. So we're gonna use these, and I think okay. they're gonna fit. Is this guy gonna fit in there? Sure, sure. I think they're gonna fit just fine. Okay. Um, I wonder, now a lot of times when you have a tree like that, you will want to tie it into place. Oh. And so I've got a little bit of wire, and we're gonna, we're gonna do that. So first thing we'll do is, You just want to put that around the roots and yep so what here's what that. we're going to do is okay we're going to get just a basic idea let me reach over here okay we're going to actually come up through the bottom oh. of that so here's a basic size we may need so okay. let's pull that out flip it over flip the pot over what kind of wire is this so uh, this is aluminum wire. Ooh, it's very, uh, I would expect it to be really hard yeah. to bend. It's really not at all. So it's been, uh, it's been annealed. So okay. it's been heat treated, brought up to temperature. It makes it real soft. And the thing is, as you use this uh, wire, as you move it around, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of loses that flexibility. Really? And uh, firms up. Let's see. So maybe we can kind of get it up through that. Yeah. So, so like that. So here's what we'll do. Um, we are going to, I've got a little bit of potting soil. I'm going to mix with some bones that soil. So let's get that opened up. Oh, it's not open. Are you looking at like a one to one, maybe? Yeah, and that's already got some pine bark in it. Yeah, it looks like pine bark, looks like mica. Looks like some. I bet there's uh, those little tiny rocks. I bet right there on the uh, front of the front of the box will probably tell you. 
course, river sand. Vermiculite, that's what uh, the mica looking stuff is. Okay. So okay. I think with those ingredients, um, I think that's gonna help with, with the drainage, the aeration and stuff. Um, this isn't normally what I use on my deciduous trees that are outside. It's almost strictly um, inorganic stuff, and but this has got organic material in there. And I think that's gonna be okay for these. So uh, let's just put a little layer on the bottom. Let's find out how that tree can set in there again. I think definitely we go through here. Maybe pull this this way a little bit. Yeah, and I wonder if... Maybe fold this one over. I wonder, can we... Yeah. Can we, here, let's work this through. Is it really necessary to anchor your tree like this? Well, when you have a tree that's gonna be a new soil and kind of top heavy, it, yeah. you know, um, later on this summer when we take it outside, the wind could blow it over. That's a good point. Um, you get these dang squirrels around here. Oh my gosh, yes. To uh, run by them and bump them. You don't want them to be knocking them off the benches or knocking them out or whatever. But this is basically, the most important part of the wiring process is um, to let them get reestablished. Okay. Are you ever gonna run into a problem where you just sort of leave it, your roots get so crazy that it's hard to get that wire out of there? Uh, that, that can happen, but what we're looking at here is places where we're, where we're tying that to are gonna be places, or are gonna be uh, parts of the roots will probably eventually be cutting off anyways. No kidding, okay. Yep. So um, the tree is firmly anchored into the pot. For real. And when the cat comes by and bumps or whatever, like I said earlier, it should be should be fine. Tries to chew it. Yeah. I think we're gonna clean up this tree a little bit. Looks like it might have just a little bit of scale. Yeah, it's usually a pretty good idea anytime you bring plants in from a nursery or a box store to really check them out because yeah, they could. All right, so that's pretty good. So why don't you go ahead and just fill that up, and I'm gonna cut a piece of wire for this one. And it looks like I'll come just right over the side right there. Now surely our watering trays that we bought are handy too, aren't they? So we can, we can just set those down and then fill them with water. Yeah. The water with, I mean. Sometimes it's hard for me to talk and do it at the same time. You know? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask you, it came with these little inserts. Is this just in case you don't want those um, drainage holes in the bottom? You can just keep this inside? Well, actually, that just snaps on the bottom. So this acts as your no. acts as your water tray below it. Gosh, it'll just hold like a tablespoon of extra water for right. you. <laughs> Okay, so same same principle here. And again, um, as people are watching this and, and know about a little bit about uh, repotting and stuff, when you're potting a bonsai, you're really looking for where it's setting in the tray and um, um, kind of how it presents and stuff. We've just rescued these out of a garden center. So right now, the only thing I'm really worried at or interested in is seeing if we can't um, revive these trees a little bit and just make them live, make them thrive a little bit. Make them live. Yeah. Regenerate some roots. When we fill these up with roots, um, again, we'll be more. Um, oh, we need some. Roots. We'll pay. We'll pay a little more attention about where we put. Um, I don't think I need any more of that because this has got plenty of organic matter in it. Okay. So I'm just gonna use it straight out of the bag. So I, I am still because we've got that. Got void right underneath there. I am gonna chop stick okay. it. Okay. And uh, there's I not a too. yeah. There's not a lot since there's not a lot of roots in there. There's not a lot of need 
to do a lot of chopsticking just because it doesn't, um, you're not sitting there looking for all those. Good. But I just want to make sure I get it up underneath. And then if we're right, if this thing does start mm -hmm. growing roots again real quick, it really won't take long for these pots to fill up. So we could be ready to repot them again this time next year. Okay. I'm doing just a tiny bit more. I'm gonna put another shake in yours too. coming out here yeah if... what's what's neat is that That'll it kind of acts as an anchor that way when the whole weight of the trees come in this yeah. direction that kind of uh, shows as an, an anchor it's just good fun it's just good fun yeah so let's throw our water dishes down here okay well I've got um we need let me bring over. um let me see here you know what I'll smoosh right in all right all right, let's fill them up with water. So this uh, soil looks really dry and the organic matter in there is really dry. Um, it, it actually looks like it could be a little hydrophobic right now. So it's gonna take a lot of water to get that soil wet again. So we'll have to, we probably end up soaking them. We'll probably better pull one of those trees out of there after they drain through. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Probably do a, a kind of a, a dunk method on them. Okay. So we'll, we'll probably end up submerging them. So while we're doing that, should we just push that off to the side? Let's pull uh, your variegated ficus out. Let's take a look at this one because I think it's in a very different situation than that other one. This is completely saturated. This is so, so wet. I don't know if ficus likes that or not. Looks like we might be able to. You can use your root rake hey, again. The root rake. I love this thing. I don't know how I've lived so long without one. Well, your birthday's coming up. Maybe you'll get one. Oh. Gosh, it's it's just like a massive just once we get them out should we put them in a, a little I think tray we should put them in a little tray we could actually recycle the the pot the plastic pot that the other one came out of if, if, oh yeah well we, want, we might want to split these up since I think we'll maybe be able to get we can make the tiniest bonsai out of this little guy mm -hmm. here should we, uh, while you're teasing those out, should I put a little wire on that and put a little shape into it? Make a little tiny tree out of it? Yeah, uh, what, it's too small for this pot. Yeah, let me, uh, let me grab it. It's really. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna reach over here and grab this. Those other two just, fell apart. They were so dry and desiccated, but this guy. I don't know. Maybe they're maybe these aren't separate plants. Maybe they're fused down here somewhere in the root system because you do not want to come apart. So this was kind of easy because this was out of the pot, but mm -hmm. I took this thin wire, wrapped it around. I made sure that uh, I wrapped it tight enough that it touches the uh, trunk all the way around, but not tight enough to already 
bite into it. Okay. And then not loose enough to where when I turn it, it, it loosens up. So um, there's things you could do with this. Um, you know, we can turn, we can maybe look at this as becoming the new leader. Really? We can bend that down. Really? Oh. Oh. And back out. So many things. Or yeah, that could, one leaf, because this guy looks a little dead right yeah. there. Yeah. Or we could, um, when we plant it, we'll make sure that it kind of comes out of the ground, slope in that direction, and then make a bend there, and that's on the outside bend. Bend. And it's good when they're young to um, make sure you really exaggerate those bends, because as they grow, um, you know, if you had just a nice, slight little curve into it, yeah, um, they just... they kind of grow out of it. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, okay. So, because the whole thing's going to grow fatter, basically. Yeah. As it grows up, it's also going to grow much wider. So, yeah. what's uh, really big bend in a stem that's three millimeters wide is going to be not very drastic and a stem that's as big as your finger. Right. Yeah. I get it. So when you have a tree in, in the where the trunk line comes out of the soil, you want that movement in there to, to happen as it's coming out of the soil. Instead of like a straight trunk and then a crazy bend in it, them look right. Yeah. So, okay. so the way we'll plant that is they'll have a sweeping out of the soil. They'll sweep out of the soil and up. So what do you think? Can I just put it in this pot? Yeah, for or now. should I put it in? Sure. And then we'll put those in the other pots? Mm -hmm. Somehow? Yeah. Okay. Sure. You gonna lose any of that soil at the holes at the bottom? I, oh, I got it's... another guy. No, it's fine. Alright, this guy. So I, this one's gonna be small enough and it's gonna stay inside. So I'm not worried about tying this one in. Yeah. This is gonna be a big difference for this tree going from this just nothing but saturated soil to right. that. Could that shock your plant? Does that does a change in soil shock your plant, or just mostly temperature, light, that kind of temperature, thing? Temperature, light, drying out, okay. things like that. Um, I think typically most things respond well if it's going into. Um, you know, I think you wouldn't take an acid-loving plant and just completely, mm. uh, completely mm. change the soil makeup of it. But uh, most everything, you get it out of the ground. Um, you can move it into a bonsai soil. If you're working with a conifer. You always want to leave some of the native soil with it. You don't ever want to really bare root conifers. Oh, okay. Um, but deciduous, it's really a common practice to take them out and uh, root wash them and stuff. And if we wanted to, we could have had a bucket of water set up. Um, you know, if we were doing this outside, I'd probably have a bucket of water set up. I'd wash all these roots and stuff. But mm. um, again, with the situation with what we're working with, trying to rescue some plants out of a nursery, um, I think I think this is this is good here. I can't resist picking up plants and taking them out of a nursery situation where. How many times have you ever said <laughs> that you've got too many plants? I don't think I've ever said it so much as other people have said it. <laughs> I don't think those words have come out of my mouth. All right, well, this guy's. I see how you might want to wash it, but yeah. you can really see the, the main roots a lot better. So I'd be curious, people who are watching this and are really familiar with repotting ficus and stuff, um, what your opinion is on how much root you can cut. Um, because of what we have here, I probably... Do you really well, want to cut a lot of this off at this point? He's so small. So there's several know. schools of thought about that. Mm -hmm. One of them is you have this plant at this stage. We picked it up for next to nothing. It was, right. it was. what do we end up with? Like five or six out of here? Four. A lot of people will say, 
at this stage, you're not out of anything. If you go ahead and, and do as much cutting as you think you can, you're further ahead. If you lose it, what, where are you out? Just a little bit of time. I'm not a variegated ficus. If you to want, a plant hoarder, you that's want, hard. You are a plant hoarder. <laughs> but if you really want a, a ficus plant, you would go buy a good one at a reputable place and, and have a good one, right? No. We're, we're rescuing this, so. I don't know. I feel Let's better just... getting the, the sad guys who are probably going to languish and, and die in those hardware stores. I never, I never buy a big, healthy plant. I never do that. I just buy these Do you ever wonder what would guys. happen if I buy you the had underdogs. that? You ever wonder what would happen if you had that same feeling towards kittens? Oh. If every time you saw a kitten, you had to go pick it up and every rescue it? Every time I bought it? a kitten. <laughs> we'll just get those off there. How about that? Okay. Now, this this is something I would take off. But that big? Yeah. Big? Really? Yeah. Really? Well, you got all these. Okay. They're healthy. They look good. Well, at this point, do you have to decide whether you're going to bonsai this plant or make it grow into a big tree. So yeah, no. maybe maybe you decide later, like, you know what, I'd rather have this be a, a huge yeah, tree no, in my is, house. Yeah, no, this is, this is um, exactly that. And if that's something you think, we would use that bigger one and put it in there. Mm -hmm. And then instead of pulling it out right away and doing another big root prune towards the bonsai purpose, yeah. we would maybe do one more root prune um, to set it up to have a good good base to grow up and uh, make a good tree. It's so. so hard. How do you decide? How do you decide what you want to bonsai, what you want to have just grow Well, big? me as a guy that likes bonsai, I just bonsai, okay, everything. Just bonsai everything. And you as a plant hoarder, you just want the plant, so. <laughs> <laughs> let's, put, let's put this one in, in here. Okay. Well, let's put these two, and they can live in this little... And they can live in there. They can be like a little twin piece. Yeah. Okay. So let's actually, let, let's put a little bit in there. There's not a lot to wire here. No, and, and those are so small that I wouldn't wire them. Okay, really. okay. Just kind of... Yeah, I just put them in set there. Set them apart, sort of. Yeah, because... Um, and, and, and these aren't going to be set up in such a way to where they're going to be getting bumped around. They're not going to be in the wind and stuff, so... Yeah, I will not keep this in the wind. What happens when I don't wear my cheaters when I'm doing this? Should we use that whole bag of bonsai soil? Yeah. Ooh. And I wish I had just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more. That's why you can cut it with some of the cactus right. palm citrus potting mix. I'm actually gonna. That's pretty well draining stuff. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in there, and I don't like to have the soil, so it's layered as two different soils so mixing it up like you're doing is great uh, you can also use a use a chopstick in there too to kind yeah. of help poke it and move it around All right. um looks like some roots over here are wanting to go under so let's just throw let's just throw a little bit more on top that looks great. All right, well, what do you think? They look great. I'm super excited. I think they're excited too. I am too. I was really surprised, um, especially these two bigger ones, have a little more root system on them than I thought they would. Hmm. The system, uh, the soil system is, was really dry and I think we really improved that. And I think we're setting them up for success. Um, and these two, I think in the, in the, I mean, what really kind of drew our attention at first was just the pot and then the price. But yeah. then the fact that that one just kind of fell out, and we're like, you know what? We could make, what do we end up here at four? Yeah. So um, they all had a good, good root deal. system on them, and, and I think uh, I think they'll do all right. I'm excited to see how they do. So I think what we'll do is uh, keep them watered a little bit for the next uh, few days, just to make sure that soil is good and hydrated. Um, we won't put them in to any light, um, just to let them um, kind of recover from the, a little bit of the shock they had. And then the other thing is we don't want to put them with our other plants right away because I think we can see maybe some bug issues on them. 
So we'll want to deal with that too. And it'll be a lot easier to work with these since we wired them in. Yeah. A little bigger, a little stouter. So uh, we can do that right away. And it's actually these that have the, the problems. Uh, now these much smaller stems, we didn't wire them. So we'd have to be a little more, more gentle with those. Okay. So um, I think Anne Marie's pulling in the driveway. We better get this cleaned up before she gets in here. All right, everybody, thanks for watching Smoky Hill Bow and Tie, and stay tuned for the next video.